here and built some new stuff and it was dope. <laughs> and that was a sacrifice. And um, so, you know, be loyal to your country. But if we're gonna talk about patriotism, we just should be honest. What united those 13 colonies? What united the burgeoning states in America? Slavery. It's well documented. You can read this book, it's amazing. The Half Has Never Been Told by Edward Baptist. It is a very comprehensive, very comprehensive, it's a leading scholar talking about the development of chattel slavery. And he writes that, quite frankly, what brought these disparate entities together, what unified the United States of America, was an insistence on enslaved labor and the genocide of indigenous people. So is that part of what we salute to? Just saying. So if we're gonna go with the origin story that we tell each other and we say pledges of allegiance is to and all that, then that pledge of allegiance is actually about democracy and revolt. And if we're gonna pledge allegiance to kind of the real history, then part of what it means to be patriotic, in my opinion, is to actually try to get closer to the vision that was espoused all people, because you know, there was definitely women, <laughs> but for some reason they just said all men. <laughs> all people should be created equal. So, leave Cape alone. He's like uber patriotic. He's like, yo, yo, we're missing something here. We're, we're doing this thing, but we're not actually living up to that. And I care enough about this country to hold it accountable. So give it some love. Hi, thank you for your words. Um, my name is Meredith, and okay. I'm interested in Kind of this, so you're talking about talking to your families about politics and about these issues and social stuff and all these things that we see on Facebook, particularly as millennials in these like information silos, you know, or even like in our institutions or in our social groups. Like we have a lot of people around us a lot of the time reinforcing the things that we believe and the things that we think. And so as like progressives or whatever, <laughs> like we're surrounded by other people like that. Um, whereas in families, as I think all of us here are so interested in, um, we aren't surrounded by those people a lot of the time. And I'm particularly interested in the differences between like how, I mean, me as a millennial educated progressive person, how what I think differs a lot from like the other generations in my family. So intergenerational relationships and the grandparent-grandchild relationship. And I'm wondering, I mean, it's easy for me to bring these things up, again, like, when I'm surrounded by my people, um, but it's not very easy. It's actually one of the hardest things. I, one of the biggest challenges in my life is, like, bringing these things up with the generation above me and the one above that in my family. And so I'm wondering <laughs> if you have any advice or even just, like, how to step into that conversation because I always find myself like on Thanksgiving in the basement with my cousins, like with the little kids, because I'm like, I don't want to be up there yelling about stuff, but like I need to be, and I feel called to be, but it's really, really hard. And so I'm hoping, I don't know, maybe have like encouragement or advice or something. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> How many of y'all have the same questions? <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I started organizing, Um, somebody said to me, the hardest thing for any organizer to do is to organize their family. <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> My parents are like, really bohemian? 
I think I got this. It was rough. Um, happy to say I've been successful, but it's been 13 years. Um, and so I offer that to you um, as a reality check on your expectations. It's a process. And um, as somebody who is eight, quickly aging out of the millennial designation, like as of January, I won't be a millennial anymore. I feel a bit. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> uh, so as somebody who's quickly aging out of that, what I can tell you are lessons that I've learned. And hopefully that'll be an offering. Yeah. So lesson number one, don't beat anybody over the head with your politics. Because chances are you're still forming your opinions about what you think and what you believe and what you care about. And Give yourself space for that, but also give your family space for that too. So I used to go home and sit at the Thanksgiving table and be like, you know, you guys are really messed up. <laughs> you need to do more for the planet and you need to do more for people who don't have resources and you need to, and my parents are like, I need to what? Look, I raised you. <laughs> Are you eating? I bought that food. <laughs> you see how that went bad real quick? <laughs> um, so, I mean, we're like joking, but it's like that actually happened. Um, and what I found was, um, I really didn't understand where they were coming from either. I thought I understood. I was like, man, you're totally from a different generation, and your generation thought like this, and here's how my generation thinks, and it's like just not true. Our parents and our loved ones have contradictions and struggle the same way that we do. And they give birth to you, and so then there's this thing where it's like they don't probably share that with you on the regular because they're still kind of raising you. You know what I mean? Um, but when I actually took the time to get to know them, and to get to know how they think and why they think the way they think, it's much easier to have the conversations. And conversations that are invitations, not mandates. So once we started doing that, like my dad would see something on the news and he would call me and say, well, what do you think about this? Here's what I thought, but can we talk about that? Just created space. He was in some rough places. <laughs> and still kind of goes in and out, <coughs> right? But he also um, has, a, I'll just tell a quick anecdote. So my parents are an interracial couple, um, and I grew up uh, kind of joking about um, what happens when people don't understand interracial couples, okay? So driving while black, right? Where my mom would get pulled over, in the same car that my dad drove, which he never got pulled over. My dad's a speed demon. My mom was like, hands at 10 and 2. <laughs> you know? I mean, don't get me wrong, mom can speed, but she tends not to. Um, and there was times when I was growing up where my mom would have to call my dad to come get her because she'd been pulled over by the police and they didn't believe that was her car or that was her address. But if I talked to my parents about policing, or racism, they'd be like, that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. You have all the opportunities in the world. There's just a couple bad apples out there. It's hard for them to say that now. And they're opening up about stuff I didn't even know they went through. Things that were shameful and painful. <coughs> and, and they're things that we develop responses to because it's really uncomfortable to be in pain or in shame. So we need to learn that language so that we can have more honest conversations with each other. And so that's what I'm inviting you to do. So it's not like, tell me all your deepest struggles, but it is like, I wanna get to know you 
and I want to know what you think and why you think that way. And then I want to sit with that. And I want to think about what I believe and why I think that way. And then I want to see where there's common connection, because there always is. Yeah? Uh, last thing, don't give up. I've had many of horrible <coughs> conversations with my folks. There's people in my family that I don't talk to. Like, I'm still working that out, right? Like, a family member who threatened to disown my family if they voted for Obama. We're related. <laughs> <laughs> but see how that happens? Oh, you're different. But we don't want that black man running this country. But you can do anything you want to do. <laughs> Are we strange creatures? <laughs> yeah, patience. Don't beat over. Don't beat anybody over the head with your politics. Don't give up. Listen a lot. You're welcome.